Okay, let's start then. Um, well, as I told you the other day, we were, today we, I mean, we're going to finish some little things that uh, were pending from last class, and then we're going to start reviewing things, okay? Just reviewing, uh, trying to um, review the vocabulary, accept some things, etc. okay? So that is what we're, we're supposed to do today. Okay, let's start by, uh, by uh, what we were talking in the last class, which was vocabulary related to um, food, okay? And uh, I'm going to start by showing a page, which is this one, 10 most popular American dishes. You will get surprised with that because um, yeah, what they eat. Look at that. What do you think? Is that a dish for you? Is that a is that a dish for you or not? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, how can you compare that with, for example, I don't know, uh, uh, stew? Do you know what stew is, right, or not? S T E W stew. Uh, it's like a kind of uh, soup with uh, vegetables and meat too, something like that, right? Yeah, it's something that you cook, you know, on a pot, inside a pot, and then you usually you have meat, you, you have some potatoes in there, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, green beans, etc. Teacher? Yes. In Spanish is estofado, or no? Something like that, yeah, estofado. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be translated like that, okay? Uh, but this is totally different, you know. It, it's a it's bread. For us, you know, for for Chilean people, uh, that is not a dish, okay. But normally in the states, when you go to a restaurant and if you go for lunch, they usually have like a, you know, a hamburger with French fries, and that is like a dish for them. But for us, it's different, okay. When you don't have time to prepare, you can eat something like this. But normally you, in Chile, we prepare lunch and that is totally, totally different. Okay, uh, let's take a look at some of the most popular American dishes and, um, and things that they eat. For example, this is number 10, Sunday. Sunday, which is Sunday? Uh, Scarlett, read that please. And uh, the, the along, yeah, from there, along with banana split, Sunday is one of the most served ice cream based desserts in the United States of America. A Sunday is ice cream topped with a sauce or syrup, typically syrup. served in syrup, syrup. Mm -hmm. syrup, typically served in a bowl. The most popular varieties of Sunday are chocolate caramel, butterscotch, and strawberry. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of the, no, let's stop in there. It's, let's read just the beginning, okay? So this is Sunday. One of the most typical things that they eat in the United States, okay? It's pretty, uh, it's pretty attractive, okay? Do you like, uh, uh, Scarlett, do you like Sunday or something like ice cream? I really like ice cream. Yeah, and how often do you eat it? Uh in winter almost never yeah um, on in summer in summer in summer I eat it a lot yeah okay look at uh, here you have whipped cream see whipped how do you call that in spanish chantilly chantilly okay in in their sundays or their ice creams they uh, put a lot of stuff okay in chile we usually uh, eat the typical cone, you know, a cone. What is a cone? Cono. Oh, how we call it in Barquillo. Spanish? That's right, barquillo. We usually eat a barquillo or a cone or the other ones that, you know, like desserts prepared. But in there, they, they do it pretty fancy, yeah, pretty fancy. They put a lot of things, sprinkle things on top, put some fruits, etc. Okay, this is number, here you have some other differences or different Sundays. 
the Franklin Fountain, Creole Creamery, Salt Straw. And you know, when you go to a place to eat, you, you don't know what to choose because there are so many things that sometimes you get like, I don't know, I don't know, I would like to eat everything. But it, that is one of the typical things. Okay, then you have the fried chicken, Catalina. Uh, read this, please. From here, the first paragraph. Catalina? The most popular food of the southern cuisine. Okay, wait, in here. You say that the word is pronounced popu, popular. The most popular food of the southern cuisine. Cuisine. Okay. Yeah. The most popular Popu. food of the southern popular food of the southern cuisine. Fried chicken is the theme of many arguments where everyone involved seems to have a favorite, be it what their mothers used to make, a good roadside eatery or a bygone restaurant. However, it is universally agreed that the meat most must, must be. be moist, succulent, and tender. Coat tender. 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 Coat with a crunchy golden brown crust. Okay, here you have a lot of vocabulary, but in here, for example, coated, coated comes from coat. Okay, Raulio, how could you translate this? Coated with a crunchy, crunchy golden brown crust. This is the crust, what you have on top. What do you think is coasted? How could you translate that? Coated? Mm -hmm. um, cubierto. Right. Perfect. That is the, the right uh, translation. Cubierto con, un, eh, con una capa, diríamos crust. Es el, como la capa, crust. The crust es la, el, no sé cómo decirlo en español, pero es lo, lo que está encima, ¿ya? Cubierto con una capa de, eh, de eh, ah, cubierto con una cubierta dorada. Esa sería como la idea. Es medio, medio difícil de, porque son varias palabras que son similares. Crunchy es que suena así, crujiente. That's the idea. Eh, okay, so number nine would be then the, the chicken, fried chicken. Okay, usually served. What are the parts of the chicken when you, if you go to a restaurant, you want to eat and they offer you? What is, uh, what is your favorite part in, a, in the chicken? If you have to choose, for example. What part do you choose? Do you know how to tell them, call them? You have the chicken breast. Yeah, how do we call that in Spanish? Chicken breast? Pechuga. Pechuga, right. Pechuga. Then you have chicken wings. Alitas. Yeah. Chicken uh, legs. Tuto. Tuto. And chicken, chicken thigh. Mm. The upper part of the leg, that is the thigh, el muslo, yeah, chicken thigh, yeah. I think it is spelled T-H-I-G-H, thigh. I'm not sure, but that's kind of the, the translation, but it's el muslo of the chicken, okay? So those are the parts that you, that you choose when you eat, uh, when you eat chicken. Okay, let's continue. Donut. Typical thing. Carlos, read that, please. Um, okay. Although archaeologists had found some petrified remains of fried cakes with holes in the center, it is still unclear how could the early Native Americans prepare these delicious fried dough desserts, uh, desserts that we know today as do donuts. In the past, donuts were known as oily cakes, and the pilgrims from Holland are credited for bringing them to the United States. Okay. Those kind early of, donuts. Wait, wait, wait. This is kind of the, the idea of a donut, okay? Uh, some vocabulary here. Remember that this is dao. What was uh, the translation for dao that we learned the other day? Uh, this dao. Masa. Right. 
yeah, Dow. And look at that. As I told you before, a donut in the United States is a dessert. Okay. In Chile, as I, as we talked, desserts are usually cold. But in, in the United States or England, they have to be sweet solely. It's the only um, requirement to be sweet. So donut is can be considered a dessert. In Chile, we don't, I mean, first of all, we don't know much about donuts, right? Now they are becoming more popular, but in general, we don't eat donuts very much. Uh, and it's not considered a dessert, okay? Uh, okay, then here you have another description of donuts. Let's continue with other popular food, okay? Different types of donuts you have in there. Then you have brownies. Angelica, read about this, brownies. I like these ones. These are delicious. Angelica, read this. Mm, deliciously chewy, mm -hmm. dense and fudgy, with a rich chocolate flavor. The beloved brownies are one of the most popular American desserts. Popu, popu, popular. Popular. Pop popular American dessert. Some claim that Bertha Palmer, wife of the owner of Palmer House Hotel, asked the chief to invent a new chocolate dessert to serve at the... Uh, <laughs> 1893. 1893 Colombian Exposition. All right. Okay, so... This uh, brownies, you know, these are more popular in Chile, all right? You even have uh, some uh, ice creams which are a uh, brownie flavor, which is really good. I love it, you know, it's pretty, pretty fancy and good. Okay, let's continue. Different brownies in there. Okay, Braulio, you have the honor to describe the most typical, I would say, uh, North American dish, which is a hamburger. Read that, please. A hamburger is an extremely popular sandwich consisting of one or more meat patties placed in a bun or a bread roll. The meat, usually accomp accompanied by various ingredients such as tomato slice, slices, slices onions, pickles, or lettuce. Lettuce. Um, lettuce. Incre incredibly, the U in there is pronounced E. Lettuce. Lettuce. And yep. numerous condiments such as mayonnaise, mayonnaise, ketchup, mayonnaise, ketchup, or salsa. If a hamburger is served with with cheese, it is then called a cheeseburger. Today, there is a large number of hamburgers varieties throughout the world, each with its own accompaniments. Served accompaniments. At, accompaniments. Accom accompaniments served at numerous fast food restaurants. All right, okay, so the most typical food in the United States, I would say, I wouldn't say the most, but it's one of the most typical food in the United States is a hamburger. So it's, as I said before, it's very funny when you go to a restaurant and in Chile, if you go for lunch, you want to, to eat something which is prepared, you know, like a, a stew, mashed potatoes, beans, or any of those things. But in there, they offer you lots and varieties of sandwiches for lunch. Sandwiches is one of the typical lunch in the United States, okay? So it is, it is composed by a meat patty. The meat patty, the same as patty Vargas patty with a Y, okay, patty, and the plural is patties, is the typical hamburger. That is a patty, okay? It's a meat patty, okay? Placed in a bun. A bun could be, you know, um, like a bread, which is the one like a, what we call uh, a yuyas here, but you know, um, a big, that is the idea, okay? And then you can use lots of ingredients, slices of tomatoes, pickles. If you don't like pickles, you better not use them because they spoil all your hamburger. In the United States, they use a lot of pickles. And I hate pickles, you know, for me, I hate it. So whenever I went to a restaurant, they already put pickles in it, in my hamburger. So I 
usually I didn't eat anything, okay? Because when, the, when you put pickles, you take it out, but the flavor is inside, so it's terrible. Okay, then cheeseburger is also very typical. Let's continue. The, here you have some typical hamburgers, Louis Lunch, Pie and Burger, Sony Cafe, Miller's Bar, etc. Lots of different ones. Mac and cheese. Okay, Mr. Gonzalez, you are going to read that. Uh, Bastian? Okay. Bastian or, or yeah. George. Yeah, George. first first Bastian and then the other one, the other Gonzalez. What is your name? Uh, Carlos. Carlos, no. Mr. Gonzalez, what's the other your other your name? Bastian. Sebastian and the other one? And the other Gonzalez? There's Jorge. another person. Jorge. Jorge Gonzalez. Okay, Jorge. Okay, first Bastian and then Jorge. You're going to read about the mac and cheese, also very popular in the United States. Yeah, Bastian. Um, one of the most popular dishes in the United in the United States, known as mac and cheese, combines tender, uh, yet firm pasta and melted cheese. Mm, the preferred American combination includes curved macaroni, curved, curved, cur curved. curved, curved, macaroni and pas pasta and cheddar cheese. Okay, cheddar is one typical type of cheese, cheddar, okay. Quite yeah. But, but, but modern, modern varieties include various vegetables, crispy bread crumb, topping or gourmet ingredients such as crab, lobster, or truffles. Okay, continue. Although, Al, although al, it is an American... Uh, Bastian, although, although. Although it is an American stable, the dish was probably inspired by various pasta and cheese dishes that were enjoyed in Italy, France, and the United Kingdom before its appearance in the United States. It was Thomas Jefferson who eventually, 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 eventually popula popula popularized it. Popularized. Popularized it when he had the pasta machine shipped back back home to Virginia and served the dish at his lavish banquets. While in 1824, his distant cousin Mary Randolph published the first mac and cheese recipe. 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 Ah, oh, that's right. Okay, so mac and cheese are macaroni and cheese. That's that's the idea, macaroni and cheese. So it's a very simple dish that includes the, the macaronis and then you put some cheese on the, on top. Um, uh, cheddar is usually the one that they use. Okay, and also some other toppings. You know what topping is? This what you put on top of something. All right. Okay, Jorge. Let's read the next one. Uh, number four, burritos. Very popular, but they are from Mexico. Burritos. Burrito is a dish consisting of a wheat flour tortilla that is wrapped in such a way that, is, that it is possible to fully enclose the flavorful filling on the interior. The filling consists of a combination of various ingredients such as meat, beans, rice, lettuce, guacamole, and cheese, among others. Its name means like its, it, its name means little donkey in Spanish, and, and a popular theory suggests that it that it stems from the way that bed rolls and pack a period on the donkeys that carry them. Some claim that the dish or, originated in the 19th century by either either the vaquero, but by either the vaqueros in northern Mexico. Mexico farmers in California or the miner from Sonora. All right. Okay, so this is a very typical dish in the United States, burritos. Tacos and burritos, they eat them a lot, okay? And it's a tortilla. It's a tortilla that is wrapped 
wrap envuelta, yeah? That is wrapped, you know, you put some ingredients and then you wrap it, it wrapped it, okay? And then that's the burrito. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to eat because they wrapped it that way. So when you start eating, it starts going out, okay? But it's very tasty. And as you can see here, you can use a lot of uh, ingredients to fill in the burritos, meat, beans, rice, lettuce, guacamole, eh, among others, all right? Guacamole is, what is guacamole? Who knows? A mixture of uh, um, avocado with tomato. Right, and no. avocado and tomato. No? Yeah, any other thing? No, it isn't that. <laughs> no? Come on. Uh, uh, that, no, that's that's plain. That's, that's the plain. real guacamole, it's a mixture of uh, aguacate and purple onion and some other ingredients, but there's no tomato. Uh -huh. mm, well, I've tasted, I have tried with tomatoes. I've tried them with tomatoes and it's pretty tasty. Yeah, but in Mexico, don't, don't prepare that. <laughs> ah, yeah, well. Yeah, in the States, they do it with, uh, with uh, that. Okay, uh, Kimberly, are you there, Kimberly? Yes. Okay, so here you have cupcake. Can you prepare cupcakes, uh, Kimberly, before, we, before you read? I have made some cupcakes a um, long time ago, but now I don't remember the recipe. Uh, how were your, your cupcakes? Were good? Mm, they were okay. <laughs> okay, so read what cupcakes are. Okay. A cupcake is a tiny cake that is baked in a thin paper mold or an aluminum cup. One cupcake should typically serve one person. The first mention of a cupcake can be traced back to a 1796 cookbook called American Cookery, written by Amelia Simmons. <clears throat> Her recipe stated that a cake is to be baked in a small cups. The term cupcake has first been used in 1828 in Elisa Leslie's recipe cookbook mm -hmm. over the years. Cupcakes have become a huge industry and the name cupcake is now given to any small cake that is about the size of a cup. Okay, They're well it's enough, it's enough. Just, to, just to know a little <laughs> bit about it, okay, good. Uh, yeah, cupcakes now, nowadays are very popular in Chile too, okay? In, in five or four years before, they started eating cupcakes. I had never eaten cupcakes before, but now they're very popular also. Uh, Scarlett, what about cheeseburger? Read that, please. Okay. <clears throat> cheeseburger is a natural evolution of the... ¿Cómo se digo eso? Beloved. 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 Beloved hamburger. Beloved mm. hamburger. The only difference between the two being that the cheeseburger has a slice of cheese added on top of the meat patty. Meat patty. Although American cheese was the original choice, Swiss cheddar and numerous blue cheeses. Dale. Disculpe. <laughs> Blue cheeses were all used later to make this mouth watering sandwich. What is mouth watering, uh, Scarlett? Do you understand that expression? Mouth yes, watering? In, in Spanish? Or... Uh, yeah, okay. How would you translate that? Well, que se hace agua la boca, too right. tasty. Yeah, so tasty that, yeah, it's mouth watering. Okay, uh, con finish the second paragraph, please. Okay. As with, as with most dishes that are extremely popular, the story of the cheeseburger is somewhat complicated. Adding cheese to hamburgers didn't become popular until the mid 1920s. 1920s, and there are, yeah. 1920s, and there are numerous claims as to who invented the first cheeseburger. All right, okay. This word, uh, um, uh, Scarlet is history. No story, history, all right? Be careful with that. Okay, let's continue. Uh, and finally, number one in here, I don't know if that is the, the right order, but that is very typical. The crystal that you know something about Mexican food, read about tacos. 
Tacos are the national dish of Me Mexico, dating back the Mexican silver mines of the 18th century, when the word taco referred to gunpowder that was wrapped in a piece of paper and inserted into rocks. Insert. Inserted. Inserted into rocks. It was used to excavate the precious ore from mines and was called tacos de minero or minor tacos. <laughs> mm. Today the world we I I don't know how to say that widely. Widely. Widely, widely known widely known to signify the leading streets food and fast food item in Mexico. Thin flat wrinkled baker to tortillas top with numbers filled by numerous numerous fillings numerous fillings folded and eaten without any utensils any you utensils okay utensils. so that's the idea when you eat tacos you don't eat you don't eat uh, any silverware you just eat it with your hands okay you have to eat it with your hands you don't need anything else okay so My these are it's yes? harder to eat a taco than a burrito because I would eat raped in the taco no. <laughs> so what do you think is, is more difficult to eat it? Yes, the tacos. Uh -huh. Yeah, especially if you put some uh, like juicy things on top, okay? Uh, when you put juicy things, you, you, uh, you bite and then all the juice goes out. So it's very difficult to eat. Okay, so that is uh, something related to food in the United States, okay? Uh, here you can see that they, among their uh, favorite dishes or things, uh, you don't you don't mention, for example, spaghetti or I don't know, uh, mashed potatoes or rice or things like that. They eat mainly sandwiches or baked things. Those are the most the 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 one that they they prefer the most. Okay, so that is kind of uh, what. We know about uh, food in the United States. Okay, um, so with this, we are going to, we are done with the vocabulary, okay? And with the unit number six. Okay, before going into the review, um, uh, you can also use in here or learn the vocabulary related to uh, how to prepare things. We learned a lot of vocabulary about that. So you have to be able to explain if, because it might be a question for the, for the speaking test. For example, how can you prepare? For example, so you have to be prepared for that. For example, if you have to prepare something and you don't know how to cook, what can you do? You can prepare a sandwich, a hamburger, for example, which is not difficult to prepare. For example, Jorge, if you, uh, if you, if I ask you, what is your favorite type of hamburger? What ingredients do you need and how would you prepare it? Can you tell most me that? Most typical hamburger. The no, I mean the, the one that you like the most, that you. Tell me the, your favorite. Do you like hamburgers, for example? Jorge? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. So how could you prepare the best hamburger? Um, in my opinion, the best hamburger... Uh, will be the, the one that has uh, cheese, a slide of uh, onions, uh, eggs, fried eggs, because it's a, it, I, I've seen uh, fried eggs in more typical uh, uh, Chilean hamburgers, but ah, but I think it's an American uh, style. An Amer eh? American style. An American style, yeah. You know how they do that? They they uh, they fry the the egg, but they fry it more. You know, so the the yolk. You know the yolk, because the the egg is compo composed by the white and the yolk. The yolk, yeah. sorry, it's sure. Y O L K K. So the yolk, they pass it, so it's not like juicy. And so they yeah, the, the they fried it that way, and they put the, it on top the of the uh, hamburger. The yolk. The yolk. Um, has to be uh, juicy. 
Oh yeah, you prefer it juicy. All right. And also, and also, if if you want, only if you want, you can slice some potatoes and fry fry that oh. too, and add it to the hamburger. It's okay. Do you put mayonnaise in your hamburger? Full of a grass hamburger, but it's very delicious. Okay. Do you put or do you like mayonnaise in your hamburger? Um. How how can I say mostaza in English? Mustard. 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 I sorry, I, I forgot I forgot it. Yeah, mustard. Yeah, so you put mustard on top. Ketchup, what about ketchup? No, I'm not I'm not a big fan of ketchup. But All right. uh, in terms of mayo, I really like the the casera. Yeah. Okay. And homemade homemade? Homemade, yeah. Homemade mayo. Homemade mayonnaise, right. Yeah. That's great. And uh, let's see, uh, for example, uh, Braulio, what about you? Do you like hamburgers? Yes, I like them. You like them? Do you eat? Yeah. Do you always eat hamburgers? Or do you prepare them at home? Do you go to a fast food restaurant to eat them? How do you do it? I mean, I've tried preparing them at home, but not many times. Yeah. Uh, Why? Why not? Huh? Why not? Not because I don't usually eat hamburgers. So ah. the times that I, I prepare them are fewer than the times that I just buy them. All right. Okay. And what ingredients should your hamburger have? Your best hamburger. Uh, I really like hamburgers with cheese and onions. Um, I think those two are my main ingredients and the other ones are just um like accompaniamentos how yeah. do you say it yeah okay uh additives or you know accompaniment ac accompaniments some accompaniments, accompaniments. right uh, okay but, but i really like hamburgers with bacon uh do you like uh, pickles do you like tomatoes for example i like tomatoes only on hamburgers or completos or things like that. But I don't like tomatoes as a salad. Okay. Do you like papa pletos? I mean, I like them, but I am i don't love them. Yeah. If, if I have a, to choose, I, I prefer a completo over than a papa pleto. Yeah. It's a lot of greasy stuff, okay? Lots of, you know, calories. It's super, super dry also. Ah, yeah, right. But you can put some something on top or ketchup for example mm. I've, yeah, seen, I, I've seen some things that are huge huge terrible you know in, in fact in the united states the completos what we call a completo they call it hot dogs are very dull you know like bland uh, it's only the sausage and sometimes they put mayonnaise on it on them but that's it i mean they don't put a lot of ingredients like we do. In here we do, uh, we do big, com big completos, big hot dogs, and we include a lot of stuff on them. In the United States, they, they are not very fond of that. And I don't know why, but some people don't like uh, avocados, and I love it, you know, avocado for me is the best, but they don't love it very much. Okay, so let's stop here with, the, uh, with food. And we're going to go back now to uh, to the um, review with unit four. Okay, unit four is the first one that uh, I started covering with Miss Patty for this second semester. So in in uh, unit four here, I was in charge of this part which is c and d no sorry this is a b c this was my first part a better life and uh in here we have one uh, important thing which is the vocabulary and things related to uh work okay i'm going to put it in this part this is a reading about how Chinese um, initiate a city. And they talk about that usually when you start a city, there is a factory, and then with the factory, 
people start coming, you know, and then they need, for example, things to buy. So they, the stalls are, you know, are uh, placed in there. Then women come, etc. All the way that a city is uh, uh, starts. But here is the most important thing, okay? Vocabulary and speaking for pay and benefits, okay? And all this is related to work. Okay, I know that uh, some of you haven't worked. Yeah, it's something that uh, I know, but some of you have worked. Okay, uh, how many of you have worked? Bastian, for example, have you ever worked in your life? Lola? Yep. Um, yeah. Have. You have? Um, yeah. Many times? Only once or twice? Um. I worked like four years in Reñaca and now uh, sometimes I work at the at the grocery store that my family has. Ah, okay. So you have a grocery store. So you, you work in, in that store. Do you like working in there? Yep. Huh? Okay. It's... And what, what do you do? I attend the people. Yeah. You attend, you serve, okay? Yeah. Help. You usually you say because it it can be confused with attending a class. Do you understand do you see the difference? Attend a class? Attend yep. a class is when you go to a class. Usually you help people in a in a store. You help. Mm. That is much better. So you help people. Uh, and yep. what is the, the, the schedule that you have? Uh like from uh, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. Yep. Is it is it tiring? No. No? It isn't. It isn't. Okay. Uh, do you have a salary for that? Um, not really, but when I want something, my parents uh, like give me the money that I want. All right. That okay. I need. It's a, it's a way to help you, to help yourself with it. Yep. All right. Okay. Um, well, in this part, we learned some vocabulary related to job. For example, uh, employment. When you are uh, without a job, how do, you, how do you call that? You are? When you don't have a, when you don't have a job. When you don't, when you don't have a job, how do you say? I am unemployed. 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 That's right. I am unemployed. Uh, okay. So um, I'm going to talk about some words that you should you should know. For example, um, uh, yeah, estar ocupado, estar sin empleo, ¿no es cierto? Um, Salario, tenemos salario, sueldo. What other synonyms do you have for salary? Can you mention any other word that you know? Income. For? Yeah, income. Income will be like ingresos that you have, right? Uh, another way for salario? Payment. Or, yeah, payment. Wage. Wage. Your wage or your salary. Wage can be uh, can be related to daily or weekly. Yeah, weekly payment. Oh. Okay, that is wage or wages. It's W A G E wage. Okay. Uh, then, um, for example, how do you say uh, beneficios de trabajo? How do you say beneficios? Benefits. Benefits, okay. What working benefits can you mention? We learned that. Uh, if you don't remember, you can ask me. Or if you remember, you can uh, tell me. What benefits can you mention when you start working? Which are, which are the benefits, mo the most typical benefits that you have? Life insurance. La pretty good, life insurance, all right. 
what other? If someone doesn't understand, you can ask me, okay? Life insurance is so when you die, they pay uh, money to your family. That's life insurance. Hopefully you don't have to use it, okay? What other benefits can you mention? Um, dental plan. Yeah, then dental plans, okay. I don't know how to say bonuses. Bonuses, yeah, right. Some bonuses, extra bonuses for you know if you if you uh, work overtime, they can give you a bonus or bonuses for that. Okay, that's a good word. Okay, any other thing? For example, in 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 our case, as teachers, as professors, uh, you can have you can have a contract for the whole year. But some of us, some of teachers do not have a contract for the whole year. They work only from March to December, which is pretty good, pretty bad, sorry. Because you don't have, how do they call when you, cuando te pagan las vacaciones? Paid vacation, paid vacation, all right? So in our case, in uh, as teachers or you, you know, sometimes you have like a full contract or in in other cases like they, they make you a contract only for the months that you work as a professor so they say we're going to give you a contract for march from march to december and with that they don't pay you your vacation so paid vacation is a very good benefit that you can have all right okay um close the door Sarah, what the yeah, it's my wife that there's a lot of noise outside. Okay, um, yeah, those are benefits that you have paid vacation. Some some uh, companies give you um, licenses. How do you say that? I mean, license, but I don't think it's the same. No, a license is, a, for example, license is you Zoom has a license, for example. Yeah, it's a platform that you, it's like a contract. That, that's Can it a be license. like a permission? Mm, or? They call it absence, leave of absence. Or maternity leave. The leave de abandonar o dejar. For example, women have maternity leave. And, and a person, men, for example, you have a leave of absence for the days that you do not attend. All right? It is spelled like the word the hat, like the verb the hat leave. So maternity leave for a woman when when she's pregnant and she's expecting a baby, she has a maternity leave and a leave of absence for common people like when they have an illness and they can't go to work, they have a leave of absence, which is a very good benefit too. Okay. Okay, those are the things that uh, we have to care. Um, when you, when the wheelers, how do you, how do you call that? You um, retire. Retire, and the act of of retiring. The act of retiring. The noun. Retirement. Wheelers. Retirement. Retirement. Okay, when you retired, what do you get? How do you get your money? How do you call that money that you receive when you when you retire? A pension. The same as in Spanish, pension. But in English is pension, okay? Uh, in the system of retirements are different, okay? In Chile we have a the 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 hated uh, system which is a AFP in which they calculate um, your uh, the money that you save during your working time so you save a certain amount of money and then they give you that as a an account you have your own account with your money and when you retire they cal calculate the years that you are going to live and then divide that for the money that you have so for that reason, sometimes the, the pension is pretty low. It's very bad sometimes. 
depending on how much you have saved during your life. Okay, so that is something that uh, uh, we have to in improve. In the past, when I started working, uh, there was another system, and I I couldn't get that system. I started working with it, but then they changed to this system. The other system was much better because in in that way it was a solidarity solidarity with uh, with solidarity. Okay, so everybody put money in a kind of big fund okay and then the the person who earned more put that money in that in the same fund okay so poor people and rich people put the money in the same place so we got a big you know a big amount of money and then when you retired in the past they gave you a certain amount of money at the end of your uh, working time that was called desahucio. Desahucio was a certain amount of money, which was not bad. And with that money, you could buy something. Some people used to buy a house, their house, or some others used to buy a car or something in order to work in the future. But it was a good amount of money. And then they give you a pension, which, is not, which was not very, very good. The pension was not very good. But the good thing about that is that you received a certain amount of money. Nowadays, people don't get any money. They just put your money and divide it um, along the years that you are supposed to live. So the more years you live, the less is the, the amount of money that you get, the pension. See the difference? Did you understand or not? Is it too difficult? Could you understand? Scarlett, for example, could you understand what I said? Are you there, Scarlett? Me perdí un poco, profe, que no estaba aquí. Can, can anybody, uh, could you understand the difference? For example, Carlos, could you? Jorge, could you understand? Uh, I, I understood, I understood. Yeah. Uh, the main difference between the, the old uh, system, the, the old pension system and the, and the, this the one. new one, Mm -hmm. And this one is uh, that the old, that the old one, all the money is put on the same. Let's see, so let, let's say the, the same bank on the same account, and people who get retired um, uh, get or not they get a, a, mm -hmm. an amount of money, and although. And the new and the and the new one, the money is divided by the age that you are supposed to live. Yeah. The okay. Day. You're right. But the, I think that the main difference is that in the in the old one, everybody collaborated with this fund. Yeah. Uh, and now you have your own account. People collaborating mm -hmm. the same in yeah. the same in the same account. Uh, account. Yeah. Nowadays you you have your own account. So if you earn little money, your uh, pension is going to be little money. If you earn more money, then your account is going to be bigger. So it's kind of an individual account. In the, in the other system, the, uh, solidarity was the main word, solidarity. I earn more, but I put this, all my, you know, my discounts in that account to help those people who earn less. Okay, so it was more... It was fairer in a certain way, yeah. Well, but that's those are things that are are have been changing. Uh, now I'm going to how do you say postular, for example, in English? Apply. Apply. You apply. And what is the the the, the preposition, Scarlett? You apply. Postular a una vez. No. Apply? For, apply? For, for. Yeah, apply for. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And what is the person, what's the name of the person that applies for? The noun. Postulante. Appliant. No. 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 Applicant? Applicant, that's right. Ah. You, you are an applicant, okay? And you apply for a job. Okay. Um, okay. How do you say mecharon? Fired. 
I got fired? Yeah. You have to use it with verb to be. Usually in passive way, passive form. I was fired. I was dismissed. I was sacked. The saco. We chat on a saco. Yeah. To be sacked is the verb. To be fired. Uh, and uh, okay, those are the ways. Y contratarte? How do you say me contrataron? I was hired. Yeah, I was hired or they hired me. Okay. Hire and fire. Those are the ver verbs. Hire, contratar, fire, despedir. Okay, I'm going to try to uh, dictate you some words or some sentences that I want you to translate. Uh, let's see. Uh, Angélica, how do you say he postulado mucho trabajo este año? What? He postulado a muchos trabajos este año. I postular. Ajá. Apply for. That is the verb. Apply for. But I he, he postulado. I no sé. No, you are right. I have applied for to, for many jobs. jobs. Uh -huh. This year. I have applied for many job, <coughs> jobs this year. Uh, let's see, Raulio. Me echaron de la pega. They fired me from work. Yeah, okay. Or um, eh, me echaron al saco. O sea, ¿cómo sería? Me dieron la PLR. Eso sería como menos el, 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 lo vulgar. How could you say that? They throw me to the sack. They <laughs> threw, threw me? No. I was, I was sacked. I was sacked. I was sacked. Okay. Uh, what is the opposite of lazy in, in terms of work, Braulio? You are, a, you, are a lazy, you are a lazy worker or you are a, a lazy person or a... Workaholic? I don't know. Workaholic person, yeah. Uh, uh, workaholic. Uh, okay, Scarlett. Uh, renuncié a mi trabajo porque no me gustaba el ambiente. How can you say that? Uh... No sé si ahí se usa give up también o no. No. Give up es renunciar a una cosa. O sea, Por ejemplo, uh -huh. I gave up smoking. Yeah. Uh -huh. But renunciar, you can say quit or resigned. Uh -huh. Or resigned. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, how was it? <laughs> me renuncié a mi pega. Era, espera, renuncié a mi trabajo porque no me gustaba el ambiente laboral. I resigned my job because I didn't like the ambiente. Okay. I don't know how to say it. Working environment. Environment. Okay. Igual que la I didn't like the working, working environment. Okay. I resigned from. You resigned from. You can say, I quit, mm -hmm. I quit my job or I quit it. That, that verb can be both. Irregular mm -hmm. or regular. So you can say, I quit or I quit it. And the noun, I quit my job, I quit my job. Or I resigned from, I resigned okay. from my job, all right? Bastian, how do you say, for example, eh, estoy sin pega en este momento, así es que he tirado varios currículum. Estoy, la estoy poniendo difícil. Bastian, are you there? No, he's not. Carlos, how can you say that then? I'm sorry, what did, what did you say? Eh, estoy sin pega en este momento, eh, así es que he tirado varios currículums. Uh, I'm, I'm unemployed uh, this time, uh, this moment, mm -hmm. and I have applied uh, for, in, in many, for many places or something like that. Yeah, I have applied for many jobs, okay. But it's, he tirado varios currículums, I said. Mm. I have thrown many. No, you don't throw. A no, 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 no. So, so you know, uh, many resumes. I have sent many yeah. resumes. Yeah, I have sent a lot of resumes. I have sent a lot of CVs. All right, both. Okay. Uh, eh, Crystal, estoy muy contento porque me dieron un ascenso o porque me ascendieron. 
Krista? Yeah. I'm pretty happy because uh, and the job gave me um I don't know how to say a sentiment. <laughs> how can you say that? <laughs> chabullation, no, chabullation. How can you I'm say really that? I don't know how to say. I'm really happy because I, okay, yeah. I'm really happy because I, I get or I got a promotion. Yeah, I got a promotion or I was promoted. I was promoted. Yeah. You both are correct. You were right, Jorge. Uh, I got a promotion or I was promoted. Both are correct. Okay. Uh, Braulio, uh, la pega es mala, pero mis compañeros de trabajo son excelentes. Um, the work is bad, but my co-workers are excellent. Okay. I would say my job. My job is not good. My job is not, or it's really bad, but my co-workers or my workmates are excellent. That's right. Catalina, eh, tuvimos un paro eh, que duró un mes y ahora estamos trabajando tiempo extra. Um, we have a... Uh... <laughs> Help, 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 help. Who can, who can help? We were on a strike. We were, strike? Yeah. you are, good, Catalina. You have, you are on, to be on a strike. Yeah. Yo, yo dije, la traducción mía, yo dije, tuvimos un paro, parece que dije. Yeah, tuvimos. Pero tú tienes que acomodarlo. You have to accommodate that to the way they say it. Usually it's to be on a strike. So. I was on a strike. We were on a strike in this case. We were on a strike. Uh, y ahora estamos trabajando tiempo extra. We were on a strike. Mm -hmm. And now we are... Work overtime. Yeah, we are working overtime. We are working overtime. We are working overtime. Okay. Uh, eh, el trabajo muy demandante. Eh, who is... Uh, uh, Kimberly, are you there, Kimberly? No, Angelica, what about you? Are you there? Yes. Yeah, okay. El trabajo muy demandante, pero ella es muy trabajadora, así es que ha ten, no ha tenido problemas. Slow down, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, el trabajo muy demandante. How can you say that? This job is pretty demanding. <laughs> Demanding, demanding, all right. Demanding. Yeah. Pero ella es muy trabajadora, así es que no ha tenido problemas. But she is workaholic. Yeah, she's very workaholic. She's very workaholic and has no problem. No ha tenido. Uh, present perfect, has, present perfect. She, she, have, she hasn't had problems no yeah she hasn't had many problems that's right she hasn't had many problems eh, eh, Scarlett el trabajo en que estoy ahora es muy bueno tengo beneficios tales como vacaciones pagadas eh, incentivo económico ah. horario flexible <laughs> pero de nuevo <laughs> yeah. el trabajo en que estoy ahora es muy bueno yeah. let's start by that uh, the job I have Right now, it's very good. Okay. Tengo beneficios tales como? I have benefits like? Such as. Cuando vas a enumerar. Such as. Ta, 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 it's better to say such as. Okay. Such as. Benefits such as? Vacaciones pagadas? Paid vacations? En sentido económicos? ¿Cómo? Incentivos económicos? Ah, eh... Economic treats. <laughs> yeah, economic treats, economic incentives, bonuses. You could also say bonuses, right? Okay. Uh, y horario flexible. Um, flexible schedules. schedules? Flexible. No, no, guarda, ¿cómo se pronuncia? Schedule? schedule? Or, yeah, schedule. Of flexible hours, flexible schedule. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. And... Uh, I want to show you another thing here. Uh, I know that we are almost in time, but this is the last thing that we're going to do. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to send you some uh, dialogues and then you will have to review. Um, I have here some other things, okay? This is something that you had already, the career ladder explanation. You had it in your paper, in here you have, see? The vocabulary related to jobs, for example, here you have apply for, trainee, earn money, house tra in-house training, promotion, promoted, prospects, employees, uh, in charge of, etc. All this vocabulary, you can review it again. Okay, okay. There you have the verb quit, for example, that we're talking. Quit, um, career change, dismiss, unemployed, except part time job. What is the opposite of part time job? Full time, full -time. job? Yeah, full time job. Okay, full time job. Uh, now, in here I have another thing that is vocabulary also, employment vocabulary. I'm going to try to send it to you for you to do it. Uh, this is job. This is a dialogue. I would like you to read it and this would be the last thing that we're going to do. Okay, so I, I, I want two people to do it. Uh, let's see, um, Carlos, you and uh, um, Scarlett, you. You can start. Scarlett, you, you can start and then Carlos, you follow. Okay. I am Lucy, right? Yes, right. Okay. Uh, hi, Bob. How is it going? Fine, thanks. And you? Just fine. Where are you going now? To the library. I have to finish the assignment for tomorrow's class. Why don't you do it at home? I have a part-time job in the evening, so when I get home, I'll be too tired to do an assignment. Mm, where do you work? I work in a cafe. Why do you like the job? It's interesting. I really enjoy working with people and get extra money. How is the pay? Uh, wait. Here. <laughs> the, the, the pay's all right. The pay's all right. I get seven euros an hour? Seven pounds. I would like seven seven oh. pounds. Pounds. Okay. Yeah. I would like to earn money as I need a lot of money to buy a new laptop and and a smartphone. And how will you do that? I'll try to pick up as many extra shifts as I can. What about your studies? How will you manage your time? Well, I don't know yet. I might consider taking fewer courses next semester. I wouldn't do that if I were you. You should make your studies your first the first priority. What if your parents know about it? Ah, uh, you're right. Thanks for the for your advice, Lucy. I got, got I have got to go now. See you later. See you, Bob. All right. Here you have some little vocabulary. I think that the most important one here is to earn money. When you when you get a salary, you earn money. And uh, shifts, which is somewhere here. I can't remember now. Do you understand the idea of shifts? Here. I try to pick up as many extra shifts as I can. Turnos? Yeah, that is a shift. Uh, when you go, for example, in the morning or in the afternoon or at night. And sometimes that gives you possibilities to work in another place. Yeah, for example, let's see, I have, you can study in the morning and you can have shifts at night, okay? Which is pretty good. Okay, that is a good word to, to, to know, shifts. Okay, uh, we're going to stop now and then next class, we're going to continue with the review. Um, I'm going to bring some other stuff uh, with this vocabulary. And uh, we are going to, we have all the week to continue. If you have certain doubts or things to ask, you can bring them for next class and ask me, okay? So, okay, that will be all for today. See you um, on Wednesday, okay? Okay? Okay. Bye. Yeah, okay. So, bye-bye, bye. see you bye. on Wednesday. Hello. Ah, antes que se, antes que se vayan, antes que se vayan.
poquito. No. Acuér... Antes que se vayan, no te vayas, no te vayas. Acuérdense de responder, le mandé un correo, responder la, si no lo han hecho todavía, responder la encuesta para la acreditación, pues chiquillos, necesitamos que la respondan. Ya, hasta ahora han respondido más los de primero y los de primero son los que menos cachan de la universidad. Pero, Entonces, profe, ¿Mm? parece ¿Sí? que la Miss Candy también había mandado un formulario de, para acreditación. Sí, pues sí, ¿El ella mismo? Lo mandó, sí, el mismo. Yo, ella lo mandó, pero como les puse ahí en la carta, hay 42% de respuesta. Pues. Entonces yo me preocupé por eso, entonces ahora volví a mandar el asunto y eh, begging, ¿ok? Rogando que contesten porque eh, lo necesitamos. Necesitamos que por lo menos tener un, un porcent 